What's up guys? Welcome to Anchor Designs. My name's James. Thanks for coming along. So in this video, what we have is uh, from the work that we've done on the previous ones, we've now got all the uh, assembled painted parts ready uh, to be brought together now. And uh, and we're starting to see the, uh, the, the finishing line of this project. So part four is going to be um, related because uh, we're going to rebuild the motor. I need to do the, uh, the fault finding and see what's up with that, get that working and uh, attach the, the foot pedal switch. I've got some vintage looking cable as well that's period for the time so um, that's going to be on, uh, on, on part four uh, but it's also going to be a separate of how to uh, rebuild um, English standard 240 volt motors. So make sure you come along for that one. Uh, hit the, sus the subscribe so you know uh, you know when to come along and uh, yeah please uh, support the channel best you can and uh, look forward to uh, having you on the next one. Just off uh, off camera here I did a little bit more of cleaning up on the uh, on the nuts and bolts um, really really easy to do so I didn't want to I didn't want to put too much footage in um, I feel like I, I put in I, I record everything that I do but I, I do tend to to take out at least 30% of the footage that I've taken um, because it's just it's just not that uh, interesting not I'm saying that this is but uh, I, I like to filter through the uh, filter through the bits and bobs so I'm uh, on this part here the reason for I think um, all I can make as an educated guess is the reason why the motion box had all the uh, all, all the sawdust and the and the congealed crap in the uh, in the bottom of it was because of that uh, scraper guard was bent quite badly up um so I've, I've flattened that down on the small press uh just to just to try and prevent that from uh, future happening but uh wear and tear I've, I've measured with a mic on the uh, top and, and the bottom of the uh, of that shaft and there's very very little wear um in fact there's there's no wear on that at all uh, so it's not the it's not that the shaft is worn down or anything like that. It's I think it's I can only put it down to that, and it's sawdust. It gets absolutely everywhere. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those. It's one of those. Uh, so as you can see here is I have the um, the head of the machine. I'm just um, assembling this now. And I've got to say, cleaning up all the nuts and bolts and, and keeping everything organised like we did in the in the previous videos, it makes reassembly easy. Um, I do have a confession that I had to look at um, look at one of the previous videos uh, just to make sure that the uh, the uh, saw blade guide housing went together okay, and uh, I, I put the right um, uh, bolt in the in the correct location. So. All the prep work, definitely worth doing. It takes a little bit of time, but um, the time you save in future with this, especially when there's a lot of little parts that all look very similar, it uh, really does really does save time. Same goes with the paintwork as well. Uh, I must say the the video on this it doesn't always um, it doesn't seem to bring the best of the paint up i think in person it, it does seem to look a little bit better i don't know if whether it's lighting or uh or, or the cameraman is is crap uh <laughs> but uh the, the paintwork doesn't look great but everything that i've masked up was masked up well and i had very little clean up of um of machine contact faces to be um to do any sort of uh rework on that and it just it just went together really easy so this this probably took me you know, if if I was doing it without recording, it would probably take half an hour to reassemble everything. Um, it was really, really easy. Again, a quality machine. It's built well, and um, all the parts are, are good. And even after all these years, uh, it's it's just everything's still nice and tight on it. And uh, hopefully, another uh, 50, 60, 70 years out of it, and uh, for the next uh, custodian. The next part here is the uh, blade tension that I'm awaiting for um, some material to come. I had to put in the old uh, the old handle that's uh, that's on there, and it's probably going to end up as being a uh, 
a uh, a permanent temporary measure uh, <laughs> but no i will uh, i will machine a, a new part out on the myford i just uh, i haven't got around to it and to be honest i'm not sure if i'd have the die to um to to cut it and uh, and redo that so i need to that's something on the to-do list that i need to do but uh, just a temporary measure you'll see it just going in now and um it's it's one of the points that i need to do you've always got the little snags at the end of a project and uh, this being one of them The blade adjustment uh, mechanism on here is uh, is really nice. It's so simple. It's uh, it's basically just two opposing uh, ones a blank and ones a um, ones a threaded insert, and it's just a clamp uh, to clamp onto the um, uh, to clamp on the height adjustment. And I mentioned in in part one that I'm uh, I've been on the lookout for to try some files, and just looking through the manual here, we've got uh, it's got to be a, a quarter inch shank file. And I can't find any reference or any um, any sort of particular size length or, or anything that this requires. It'll take a little bit of working out, but it's something, again, that I am quite keen to to just try out, really. I, I, I quite like a die filing machine, and if I can use this uh, to do it, then uh, that's that's quite exciting. So I, I, I would like to, to try and have a go. But, again... Blades wise, that's another issue that I've got. So, I've I've looked through some forums, and um, the spring arrangement on the top, uh, you can adjust it to, to any requirement. So you can have a, you can tension up to five, six, or seven inch inch blades, um, and that's for cutting really heavy stock. So, this is uh, it, it's meant for business. This uh, this tool. Um, so I'm, I think what I'm going to end up doing is modifying some bandsaw blades. Uh, I've got a, a high-speed drill press that I can, I can drill through the uh, through the blades no problem, and I'll just have to get some really small pins to to fabricate the um, uh, you know six-inch blade to put in this. So uh, I've seen people do it on other other style of machines, and um, I think it should be it should be pretty good. So I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. I can't exactly ring up uh, ring up Beaver and ask for uh, ask for the spare catalog. <laughs> So this is now the blade guide assembly, and uh, as we mentioned in the in the previous video, is this is very very similar to typically what you'd see on a on a bandsaw. Uh, so you've got the uh, thrust bearing at the back there, and you've got uh, the 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 gullet of the blade that sits in between the uh, the two side guide bearings, if you want to call them that. And again, it's um, it's a you know only really seen on 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 bandsaws probably due to the the cost of manufacturing this there's a lot of small small parts to this um and uh, you know nilled uh, nilled knobs and bolts put onto this this isn't a, this wasn't a cheap machine in the damn sure the only one that i can make a rough comparison against was the english made meddings which um you don't see them um although they are Obviously, we are in England here. Um, I haven't really seen many of them, and when they do go, they seem to be snapped up really, really quickly. And I haven't found another uh, Beaver scroll saw on uh, UK eBay as of yet. And typically in America, they're not really fetching great money either. Um, I, I mean, it's not about money, of course, but uh, it's always interesting to see what the what the sort of market demands and, and what people are actually interested in. Um, but scroll saws that they're not great machines really to, to use in general um, I think if you if you get used to them and, and know how to use them and, and know what the applications are as well I mean you it's one of those it will cut a one inch bit of you know maple etc but why would you on a scroll saw um, and I think typically scroll saws are, are usually bought in the in the shop when you've got everything else and you want to do you know a little bit of jobs or you want to do something that you can't get in with the bandsaw for obvious reasons um so i don't think it's it's typically on the on the top five of must-haves for your for your workshop but um it's it's a nice compliment to what i do and i don't really have a great use for a scroll saw but it's nice to know that i've i've got it in-house and if i do need to do something with it then uh, then i've got it and i know it's going to work well because this is why we're here 
uh, and I have technically got two, which I'll uh, I think in part four I'll make that make that comparison and do some uh, some cutting tests. But uh, until then, we've got a few little jobs to do and uh, and get those sorted and out the way. When you do watch people uh, restoring um, uh, tools on YouTube, you, you you're very it's very easy to criticise, and I think. Now that I'm sat here watching my own work being done, and I'm using this really small screwdriver head on those uh, on those bolts, there is is really cringeworthy. But it's so easy when you're watching to uh, to to insult and uh, and and just point out that someone's doing it really wrong, and it's very frustrating. But uh, oh, there you go. Now we're now we're using a uh, an actual correct size screwdriver, but. Uh, being sat in the in the editing uh, seat now and, and watching this, it's so easy to 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 do something obviously wrong, um, and not realise it really at the time, and, and you just get on with a job and not really think about it. But uh, I must admit, it does make you it does make you really careful and, and think about what you're doing when you when you start making making videos. I mean, the the couple that I've done now is uh, it's it's you can be quite uh, self conscious and um, build high in bridges for yourself to to try and conform to it's not the easiest but uh, I'm getting there I'm getting there another little bit to do uh, on the list is uh, I've installed uh, all the all the blow line components on here uh, but again waiting for uh, waiting for deliveries from eBay um, I've, I've bought some uh, some just tubing uh, that I can connect up to but it's it's not a big job I just need to take off the head and uh, and feed the feed the tube through the uh, the chassis and uh, I built the nozzle as well I replaced that previously I've uh, I've got a find the right thread for that and uh and, and connect that up and uh, have that all nice and stable um it's one of those it's another snag that uh, we've just got to tackle uh, but it's not a big job um but everything's there that uh, that needs to and everything's been cleaned and uh, made sure to work so the reason why uh, a lot of the time I'm using a adjustable on these a because they're really cool the ones that I have got and uh, the one I'm currently using is one from Hantel Rescue, and it was 20 quid. Uh, so I'm going to use that. <laughs> I am going to use that. But the smaller, the small green one that I've got, um, I've, I've got every, every size spanner in my toolbox, you know, from small BA ba size spanners to french and uh and imperial but uh i haven't i haven't got any thin profiles so the small adjustable that i've that i sometimes use does get me out of the uh, out of the doo, doo sometimes uh because it's it's thin jawed so i can get into those awkward little spaces on there yes i know adjustables aren't made for anything and they're not particularly very good at doing anything but it does get you out a, a little bit of a jam, so yeah, it's it's one of them. This is the scraper guide that we uh, that we that we straightened up the best that we could earlier on. Uh, it's a lot better than it was. It's not perfect, but uh, I just run the risk of, of doing a bit more damage, so I didn't want to I didn't want to go mad and get all the panel beating uh, hammers and dollies out and just to try and get it perfect. It's better than it was. This isn't going to see much use from from certainly my ownership. Um, so I'm not I'm not too concerned about it. I'm using the same oil. Uh, it's called uh, just whey oil that I use on the Myford. It's um, it, it's it's not too thick and it's not too thin, and it it's it works really well. It does put on a little bit of a film, and if you put it if you blather it everywhere, it does instantly attract dust like any grease or oil. Um, but I. I've looked at the manual. I don't know what the correct oil is for the uh, uh, for the reciprocating box at the bottom there. Um, I'm just using whey oil. It seems to it seems to be okay. It's uh, it feels good in the uh, in the box, and the the greaser on the front for the uh, spring tension uh, is it just says a um, a non heavy grease. So I need to get some. I think just some uh, just some multi-purpose uh, grease will do the job for that. Absolutely fine. But uh, again, I'm not going to be using this all the time, so I'm not I'm not stressing that I'm you know I'm going to 
cause any damage um, really for the use that I'm going to be using but uh, as long as it's got some form of lubricant on there and if it needs changing in a couple of years then it's it's no big job when you know how it's you know it's five ten minute type job so not worried about that there are two adjustment points at the bottom there for uh, tramming in the uh, the base to the blade and making that uh, that square uh, but I think for what I need to do to just make sure that it is square to the blade is is I've got a, a lovely stare at machinist level and I'll, I'll go over the top of there and uh, and just get it you know within within a good tolerance um, I haven't got a surface plate big enough that I can put a uh, put a, a test dial indicator to, to get it true true but again it's just a scroll saw I don't want to go too nuts with this um, but every every machine part has, has had a film of oil on and, and cleaned and threads have been cleaned out and um, you know no bolts were replaced as and where they they needed to be um, but it's it's coming along good so this is this is a bit of a final final touch and uh, I left this this bit till last so She's looking good, and uh, I'm just making sure that uh, I'm cleaning up any excess oil. So, well, guys, we're we're coming up to a wrap there, and uh, and it's looking good. I'm I'm really pleased with this. I'm going to put some more detailed photos up on Instagram. So, uh, please be sure to uh, send us a like, subscribe, and check out Instagram for those behind the scenes updates and uh, and latest shop news. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, who doesn't like say uh, who doesn't like a nice clean looking beaver? <laughs> Cheers, guys. See you again.